indoor water use and water use reduction. The dozens of different mechanisms and appliances that are available to make, that are available to make equipment like toilets use less water and to detect leaks if they occur. There are also many claims made for each new product and a lot of time is required to master this subject, particularly as some low water use equipment is not as efficient as traditional equipment, so decisions are not simple. Why use new when you can recycle? Brownfield redevelopment. There is always public acceptance that redeveloping land is good. There are certainly a number of accreditation points to be won from going down this route. However, this has to be qualified by the fact that some previously used land is wonderful for wildlife, and cleaning up some difficult sites takes so much energy that it can never make environmental sense. On this particular site, 12 large earth-moving machines drove around for over two years just to level it, and when they had finished, it was still a cold hole in the ground, somewhere that I would not like to live. Most pollution is very stable. Moving it around can be more of a hazard than just leaving it alone. The latest UK regulations make it almost impossible to take contamination away from a site. As a result, techniques are now used in the UK that enables the contamination to be diluted on site with clean material until the concentrations fall below the danger threshold. Again, this sort of operation calls for specialist knowledge and needs a carrot and stick approach by the planning authorities. Building reuse. In Romania, there are some very attractive buildings. Unfortunately, many fall short of reaching acceptable earthquake standards. In a country which has earthquakes, the permitting regime is understandably very rigid. Even some of the more recent buildings may not comply with the very latest codes. It is possible to examine columns and to test the quality of the concrete, so determining if an old structure is safe is possible, but getting it retrospectively permitted will always be hard. And no international fund will accept a building that is not fully permitted. Romanian Law 10 and Law 50 are being taken a lot more seriously now. As a result, it would be unwise to base a project on a structure that has an incomplete paper trail. However, if it is possible, then there are accreditation points available that might make this approach worthwhile. A good plan has to be a flexible plan and able to adapt with changing circumstances. It might be better to have a slightly suboptimal solution if it means greater flexibility. Sometimes markets change more rapidly than we expect. In 1990, I was part of a team that converted a brand new hotel into an office block in central London. In 1996, I was twice in a team that converted brand new office blocks into apartments. I've even worked on a business park which was converted into a housing estate. In Bucharest, the market for apartments is tightening. Maybe some developments can be converted into offices. Being flexible and able to adapt is an important feature if you are to be green. Always think outside the box and keep your options open. Recyclable content. There have always been examples where materials can be recycled. Architectural salvage has always been a profitable business but tends to be more for the residential market. The idea of recycling concrete is already established but it takes expensive equipment and needs to be done on a proper business base with quality control and testing mechanisms in place. But it is a fantastic asset as it can provide aggregate in a city like Bucharest that is a long way from rock outcrops suitable for quarrying. In the UK, crushed concrete is used for building motorways. Crushed concrete is much better than the smooth river-washed aggregate that is used in Romania at the moment because it locks together. Smooth stones tend to slide over each other. So here is a win-win-win situation. I would not like to use recycled concrete for a structural frame, but there are many other uses for recycled materials. I've worked on projects where recycled concrete has certainly been used in slabs. There are few other materials that are available in large quantities close to Bucharest that can be employed in buildings like PFA or blast furnace slag. Although there are areas in Romania where the, such materials are available, and these should be used in preference to blasting new material out of the ground. 
some of these materials can be used to dilute cement and so reduce its embodied energy content. Construction waste management. The best construction waste management technique is not to make the waste in the first place. This means controlling the procurement process and ensuring that just the right amount of material is ordered. The motor industry and the aircraft industry do not randomly order materials. So why is the level of wastage on construction sites so high? On congested inner city sites, the waste is often mixed as space does not permit segregation. But if segregation is possible, there are points to be scored. Obliging subcontractors to remove their own waste or charging them for using skips can be one way of encouraging more thought to go into procurement. Rapidly renewable. The most obvious examples of this would be using fast-growing plants and removing aggregates from rivers that are silting up. Most trees take up to 80 years to reach a usable size, but smaller material can be used for chipping. Bamboo has been compressed into boards for years. Even straw has potential for making the equivalent of plywood sheets. If you can use these materials, then there are easy points to be collected. If all the unused agricultural land was used to produce rape oil or sunflower oil, then biodiesel would be an option. Maybe new developments could be fitted with heat and power systems set to run on biofuel. This way, rural communities would also benefit from urban development. Local regional content. On any content, contract, it is important to try and source materials as locally as possible. Today, products are produced all around the world, and moving them is not considered to be strange. Moving a 40-foot container by sea is cheap. However, there is a tendency for people to want a product that they have seen in another country. Once I specified wooden benches that were manufactured only in the States for a project in the UK. In the end, I found a local man to make them by hand for less money than the US book price. I've had friends who have had handmade doors produced for their kitchens that cost less than going to a store. I once had floodlights made in England rather than buying them from Canada. Do not assume that something has to be imported. Often it can be sourced close to home. Romanians are very creative when given a challenge. Find the right men and you can win easy points. Certified wood. Many of the world's most important ecosystems are being destroyed by logging. As a result, there is now an emphasis on using timber from managed sources, that is, forests planted for timber. Provided that the documentation clearly demonstrates that the timber has come from a legitimate source, there are easy points to be obtained. What the system is really looking for is evidence that tropical hardwoods obtained illegally are not being used, and this even extends as far as furniture. For accreditation purposes, you have to produce a full paper trail from forest to end user. The trouble is that there is a lot of false documentation in circulation. The responsibility for checking has to be placed on the contractor and from him on the subcontractors and the suppliers. In the UK, it is usually written into the tender documents that payment will not be made until there is a full paper trail in place. Substitutes from a sustainable source might not give quite the effect that the architect or the client want, but with lateral thinking, a good effect can be achieved without using rare and expensive timber, so saving money and winning points. But I love my car. Public transportation. Public transport is quite good in Romania on a global scale. There is a metro system, a tram network, and there are buses, but the system is not perfect. You then have the old chicken and egg situation that people will want to use cars until public transport is good, and public transport cannot be good until car numbers are reduced. The trouble is that there are too many people living in a city, and they all want to own a car. In the USA, and to a lesser extent in the UK, there are people who get together to share the cost of driving from the suburbs into the cities. In R Romania, the really are no clearly defined suburbs or satellites towns, so establishing clear movement patterns is hard. Undoubtedly, more people would share cars if there were benefits. LEED does reward the provision of spaces for pulled cars, and it requires little effort to win these points. Parking capacity. 
In the UK, it's usually taken that there will be one person for every 25 meters of office space. Each car parking space measures 12.5 square meters, so with ours and access roads, it's usually taken that one car parking space requires 25 meters of hard surface. This means that the area of car park has to equal the area of the office. This shows the effect of not having public transport on the environmental footprint of a building. Parking underground. On every project that I have been involved with in Romania, there has been an underground car park. Often I ask why, and I'm told that it is a matter of the cost of the land. When you see apartment blocks with underground car parks being built on farmland several kilometers outside the city limits, you know that something is wrong. High density development with underground car parks is something that you only do in the middle of cities. The terraces of George in London have basements, but these were not started by digging down one story below the ground. Instead, the soft materials were removed from the foundation by hand, and the waste material was tipped to form the road outside the front of the building. This meant going down less than a meter and instead raising the road by two meters. Today, dozens of buildings in London have car parks that are at or only very slightly below ground level. Every time I have suggested raising underground car parks above ground to save time, money, and environmental damage, I receive a negative response in Romania. Yet we all know that it takes a year for a building to reach ground level and takes hundreds of tons of steel and concrete. Avoiding this waste of resources, and everybody will benefit, including the environment. There are accreditation points available if it can be demonstrated that material has not been moved unnecessarily from a site. Nowhere else in the world is the amount of underground parking that takes place in Romania regarded as being normal. It is a very expensive solution to a problem. Often with a mall, it would be much quicker and cheaper to have a standalone prefabricated multi-story car park next to the mall, or to put the car park on top of the mall, because cars weigh less than people. This is considered to be unconventional, although these solutions are commonplace elsewhere in the world and show a considerable saving in time and materials. There is nothing in green certification systems about wasting money, but building a deep basement is costing someone a lot of money and causing a huge amount of environmental damage. And of course, ultimately, car park roofs can offer a place to relax. Conserving water, innovative water, wastewater technologies. Water can be reused. Grey water can be used for irrigation, or if it's fairly clean, for flushing toilets. There are projects now where rainwater is collected and used in times of need. There is a very complex cost-benefit analysis involved here, as reusing water involves strainers, pumps, and UV sterilizers. However, in a responsible world, it does have to be considered, and there are points available. External water use. Water can be used in many ways outside a building. In summer, fogging offers a way to make the hot day bearable. There is nothing more pleasant than to have water features and fountains. Strangely, in Romania, there is a fear of water features, which is hard to understand. If Chicago can support thousands of water features, then so can Bucharest, providing that they can be drained down quickly when there is cold weather. Water-efficient landscape. There are a number of plants that can survive with relatively small amounts of water. Unfortunately, growth is directly linked to water availability, so if water is not available, growth will be limited. There is therefore a balance between having a lush, rapidly growing group of plants and using water. This is possibly the most important area where grey water can find a use. Water quality. In the early 1960s, in a small town in northeast England, there was a very high incidence of stomach cancer. It turned out that rather than processing the sewage, the authorities were spreading it on the farmland as a liquid. The water was then soaking into the sandy ground, and a few months later it was being pumped back out as drinking water. This was the first time that the link between nitrates in drinking water and stomach cancer had been demonstrated. Around Bucharest, there are many cases where water is being pumped out of shallow boreholes and the sewage is being allowed to soak into the ground nearby. In the UK, you cannot drink water that has come from a depth of less than 100 meters. 
In Romania, water is often drunk from as little as 30 meters. In less than 10 years, there will be an explosion in the incidence of stomach cancer. At that point, the authorities will be obliged to lay hundreds of kilometers of new drinking water pipe. Alternatively, a new set of regulations will have to be put in place to force deeper wells to be sunk. What I do not understand is why commercial buildings do not have their own deep boreholes. It was common in London in the past. As the mains water in Bucharest is of sometimes of questionable quality, having the ability to abstract deep borehole water and to polish it might well be an advantage. A modern treatment plant will usually fit in a 20-foot container and the cost is not high. If it can be demonstrated that these systems will help to protect the environment or the population, then there are points available. Please can we breathe fresh air? Air exchange, ventilation, and permeability. In theory, very little air should pass through a curtain walling system. Unfortunately, with airtight structures, the air can get very unpleasant very quickly. Good practice says that there should be an air change every 30 minutes. The lowest turnover rate is every two hours, but people often complain at this level. As a result, an air change of every hour is usually considered to be normal. It is therefore important to ensure that as much energy as possible is removed from the air as it exits the building and that this energy is transferred to fresh incoming air as it enters the building. The need to have a good supply of fresh clean air cannot be overstressed. It is the primary cause of sick building syndrome. Many office staff in Romania do complain about the air quality caused largely by an inadequate number of air changes. It is possible to make a big fuss about the importance of insulating buildings, but in offices, a lot of air is going to be replaced in the course of a day, and not throwing away heating or cooling is very important. The trouble is that many industrial air handling units are not efficient due to the speed at which the air passes through them. However, Offices are very heavy producers of heat with computers, plotters, printers, faxes, lights, plus the fact that every produce person produces about one kilowatt of energy. When it is fully populated, an office is full of energy. Conservation of this energy is vital, and if you can demonstrate that this has been done, there are